I was just seeing the notes that I see in the chat line, some of the some of the comments that are going on here and super timely. And uh, I wrote one of the things that Steve White wrote down for us in, in the notes from the notes was we could tap out and miss out. And, uh, you know, God, God invites us into this battle. And I love the three reasons you share it. It's, an, it's obedience, it's building faith, it's sharing his glory, and then a lengthy list of what we do fight for. So I, I, I'm, I'm just like, man, sign me up, sign me up for, for this. This is exactly what I want to be in. And I think that's why Paul at the end of his life, he says, you know, I have fought the good fight. I've finished the course. I've kept the race. He knew that the assignment that God had entrusted him with, that he had, he had done it. He had done everything he could, you know? And, uh, so I love it. Uh, any, any guys got a comment or reaction or response to the challenge that, uh, Trace has put before us here today. I'd love to hear your insight into this. And, and uh, I know for me, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Anybody else ready? Yeah. Hey, Trace. Uh, first, and let me apologize. Evidently, uh, my um, attempt to uh, get you guys the notes uh, did not work. So uh, some of you uh, uh, texted me in the chat and I emailed you that and, uh, Evidently that works. So I, I apologize. Uh, we will have uh, notes tomorrow for sure. If you guys are there uh, or we can try to get them to you uh, through email another, another time. So apologize for that. Trace, I, I really appreciate uh, all that you said, but one of the things that caught my attention and just really uh, kept it is when you talked about uh, sharing the glory. Um, and, and I agree with you. <clears throat> I, th I don't think we talk about that enough. And I, I certainly believe that there's no way we can fully comprehend mm -hmm. uh, this side of heaven, what the glory is like. You did your best to try to even uh, illustrate and describe the glory of God. I mean, we can't fathom that. And yet if we can get a, if we can get just a glimpse, a little iota of what that means. And I love what you said <clears throat> to celebrate the glory of God. Uh, one of the quotes that uh, has stuck with me since I first heard it, and it was January 1 of 1997. I remember it uh, very well. And uh, I was listening to this little guy preach that I'd never even heard of at that time, till that time. And uh, I don't know if it was original with him. I've quoted it since that time. Uh, it's in, it's at the bottom of all of my emails. You get an email from me, you'll see that quote in there. And it's, it's just this, God is most glorified in me when I am most satisfied in him. And that satisfaction is, you know, we sometimes think of that word as, well, yeah, I'm satisfied with that. No, that's, that's not, that's not what being satisfied in the Lord is yes. it is it means when we have no greater pleasure in the universe than what we take in the Lord nothing gives us greater pleasure than that and we have no greater treasure in this world than Jesus Christ and when we when we engage the Lord in that way we do the one thing that we can give to God that truly blesses him, our absolute undivided satisfaction in him brings him great glory. And, Amen. and I, I just love hearing, uh, hearing that when you talked about, despite its brokenness and disappointments, Jesus believed this world was worth fighting for. He believed it was worth fighting for due to the glory of God. Yeah. And so thanks for bringing that out in this, uh, because that's something I need to hear again and again and again. And I think all of us benefit when we contemplate living a life that really glorifies the Lord. So mm -hmm. that's a reason to fight right there, man. So thank you for that. Thanks for sharing that, Greg. That's some great stuff. Guys, any other reactions, response to Trace? There's a lot. A lot of meat on the bone here today, guys. A lot of a lot of things to process. Now, Trace, this is Scott Writings. Thank you so much for your word. I I love 
talks like this, like you said, to, just to uh, spur us on as, as men of God, I think it's definitely worth fighting for. I think one of the things is you were lit, making that list of what to fight for. Obviously, you know, what, what enters our mind is, is key every single day. I just finished doing a, um, a devotional on this. And one of the, one of the days, uh, the devotional asks us at the very end, it says, I want you to, to go to Philippians 4a, where Paul talks about what to think about, right? Mm-hmm. And look at three different versions and just, you know, do a takeaway. And so at the very end of that, obviously he lists, um, you know, what's true, what's noble, what's just, what things are pure, what things are lovely, what things are good, what are a good report. If there's any virtue, anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And one of the versions talks about continually. So it's not a one and done, like you said, it's, it's a daily, that's, that's the fight. It's a daily uh, moment by moment. And what are we allowing into our mind? Right. And that's why it's so important that God's word saturates our mind every single day. So thank you for bringing it today. Um, it, it spurs me on to continue to, to fight the good fight for all the things you just listed. So thank you very much. That's awesome, Scott. That's that. And yeah, I, I really believe that it does start in our minds, you know, and I know that um, f- for me, it's one of those things that's not that complicated, but that doesn't make it easy, right? It's, it's simple, but it doesn't mean it's easy. And, and the more that I put into my mind, the more that the truth of God comes out and the less that I put into my mind, the more other stuff comes out and it's just great for us to encourage each other just to start there, right? Just to start by putting the word of God into our mind together. Now, the beautiful thing about that trace is that's the exact series I'm in the middle of right now, getting Mm -hmm. your mind, right, getting your mind, right. And to quote Dan Erickson, I said this to the guys the first week, stinking thinking leads to stinking living. You know, that's, that's exactly, you know, where we're at. We, we put garbage in, we get garbage out. We put the word of God in, we get the word of God, the words of God come out. And, and uh, man, getting our mind right is is the battlefield. That is the battlefield for, for a guy. And uh, if we're consumed with the flesh and consumed with our sin nature and consumed with the temptations, guess what? That's that's what will emerge. And, uh, and uh, it just begins there. And that's where the battle that invisible battle is going on every single day in the life of a man. So, yeah. And, and I look at this list, you know, fight for fidelity, for your marriage, for your integrity, your purity, your truth, the vulnerable, the innocent, fight for your faith. I mean, that's, this is not an easy battle guys, uh, but it's a, it's a, it's a worthwhile battle and it's, it needs our full attention. And as a man, we know this guys, you have influence, you have impact, you, you are that, you're at the tip of the spear. And uh, I love the response you gave your, your, your child. Dad, what are you doing? Aren't you doing anything? And you're like, yeah, I'm trusting Jesus. And that's, that's, uh, that's what, a, what, a, what a great response, because to be quite honest, without him, we're in deep doo-doo. We, are, right. we, we will not be good enough to pull this off. And we've got to have Jesus. We've got to have the Holy Spirit, because... Uh, you know, we're frail, we're flawed, we're imperfect, we're going to screw up. We, we trust Jesus and we just hang on to him, hang on to him. And, and that starts with renewing your mind, getting your, not being conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, so good. I like, <clears throat> I'm Steve White. I, I liked what you said. May God always keep us in a place where he shows up or we fail. You know, typically when we fail, people are watching. It's embarrassing. It can even be humiliating. It hurts. Mm -hmm. Um, Sean Struckmeyer said in a sermon back around the first year, obedience is costly. It's expensive. So, you know, we wrestle with this thing. We try to figure it out day in and day out. What what do you want me to do, Lord? And how do you want me to do this? And, and, you know, we bump our head a lot. We get a lot of hurts along the way, but we we wrestle with it. We keep trying. Uh, Psalm uh, 37 Let's see here. Try, uh, take the light in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. I mean, those aren't just any desires. Those are the things of God is what he's talking about. In there. Take, take the light in the Lord. He will give you, you know, the desires, godly desires. 
But when you're in a spot where you're vulnerable, you're weak, you're, you're failing, it says on down here that um, the Lord makes firm the steps of those who delight in him. So that promise is there when things crash and burn, it's, it's not the end of the world. You trusted him. Something was askew here. Lesson had to be learned. Something had to be figured out. But don't give mm -hmm. up. Don't tap out. Mm -hmm. Hey, Trace, let me share a simple story about obedience. Scott Writings, I hope you're still on the line for this because uh, Scott's really at the, and is the one that gave us his thought. Trace put here, without Jesus, we got nothing. With him, we have all we need. And then he says, failure isn't final. It isn't fatal. You know, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's where the, the, the battle's won. And so last week in an act of obedience, Scott Writings gave us the lyrics to the song, Only Jesus. Uh, if you guys remember that we're still on the line, remember this, but, but uh, it was a, it tied so well with what Glenn Nash was talking about. This is only about Jesus and Scott read the lyrics. Well, my, my staff guy, Damian Cooper had never heard that song somehow, some way he missed. Uh, so he asked in the chat line, what was the name of that song and who sang that? And anyway, long story short, uh, he was meditating on that song throughout the entire day. This is last Tuesday and Wednesday morning. He and I, you know, I got up at, uh, 3.30 to drive out to Can uh, Topeka, Kansas, picked up Damien about 4.30. We're making our way that hour and a half drive to Topeka. And he was sharing with me how impactful that song was. How, you know, and he was really, we were thanking the Lord that Scott Ridings had posted this song. And we had the radio off and we were just talking about that. And then he made the comment, you know, there's two speakers here today at this event, but I just pray they only see Jesus. They only see Jesus. Amen. And in that moment, I said, hey, I'm going to turn on the radio. And guys, I turned on the radio, and I swear this happened. It was, it was uncanny. The song Only Jesus was starting, just starting to be played on the radio at that moment. We've just been talking about this. And literally chills went up our spine. We're going, oh, my goodness gracious. I mean, it, in that three-hour trip back and forth to Topeka, we had the radio on for five minutes, and the very song we were talking about was the song that was playing. And uh, it reminded us that God is good. So I circled back to Scott writings uh, later that day. And I said, Scott, you'll, I mean, this is just so cool what God did. And he used you. And Scott said, Roddy, I said, thank you for being obedient. Thank you for mm -hmm. being obedient to sharing that with us, because we would have never experienced that moment without you doing what you did. And Scott, said, you know, he's, but Scott, are you still on? Because you can share what you had shared with me. Because I thought it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. Are you? Are you on, Scott? Yeah. No, yeah, I tell, just tell, tell from your side what what it meant to you when we told you what happened. Well, it's just um, just the little, like you said, the little act of obedience, which I didn't at the time. I, I almost didn't share that with you last week. But as Glenn was talking, that that song came on, and the lyrics were just so appropriate for his message because that the whole song by casting crowns is whatever then my it's it's only jesus right that's as christ followers that's 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 what we want people to say about us it's it pointing everything to jesus so anyway i shared that and then when you came back circled her back around it's just um I, I guess i mean that actually talk talked about increasing my faith a little bit that was that was a moment there it, it, you know which didn't seem big at the time but um for you to share that and, and, you know, to impact Damien in that way. Um, it's all, all God there. So it was, thank you for coming back. It was your faithfulness to, to share that with me that encouraged me. So uh, thanks. Well, and you think it increased your faith. I mean, think about us, it increased our faith. I mean, we were reminded in that moment in the set in the car on our way to Topeka, God's got this. He's got this. He is into the details and so here, here's, the, here's the cool ending part. So as we finish our talk in Topeka, guess what song they played as, they, as the out day as people walking out of the auditorium? They're playing only Jesus. And so it was a full circle experience. It was one of those things where God, 24 hours in advance of us being there, was already set in the table for what he was going to do. And for us, all we were supposed to be is just be obedient. And Scott, you played a part. We played a part. They played a part. And uh, it built our faith. And guess what? Ultimately, and I go to Trace's three points, 
we all, to, we all got to share in the glory of God in a very small way. It was, it was, it was glory. It was like, my goodness, that was so cool. What only God could have done. And we got to be part of it. Such a, such an experience, such a great experience. Anybody else got something for us? Rod, I listened to your talk and it was yours and Damien's talk at the Kansas legislature last night. And uh, that was very powerful. I was amazed and pleased that you were able to able to do say the things that you said to government mm. people. And um, uh, this morning, the, the uh, verse of the day on the Bible Gateway um, website is Ephesians 6, 10 and 11. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. And it's nice to have that whole armor sometimes in, in this environment we're in. Um, and I was, a, I was a reluctant warrior back in the 60s. Um, Trace, I'm a whole generation older than you are. But um, I, was a, I ended up joining the Air Force and ended up staying for 25 years. Actually, I, I was active duty for six years and then came back as a reservist for another 19 years. But um, a lot of good things happened and a lot of not good things happened. But, you know, it was just it was just good to be part of the action sometimes and to be feel like I was serving and doing something good for our country and, and our people. Mm. And Larry, I don't believe in coincidences. What a neat verse for you to share with us this morning, this very morning, which ties it directly to what Trace is talking about. Thank you, Lord, for, for another, uh, not coincidence, but Godcidence. You know, God shows up and he shows out and he shows off. And that's what we saw just with what you shared. So thank you for that. And another one, I, you, a, lot, you, a lot of you remember this, but that a couple of times I heard Dan Erickson speak at the Overland Park TGIW, he'd begin, as Doc would say, um, good morning, Lord, what are you doing? <laughs> how can I help? Yeah. That's, that's how we need to start our day. Absolutely. Can I join you? Can I join you? What are you doing? Let me, let me be part of what you're going to do today. Absolutely. And that's fighting a good fight, guys. That's what it is. I wanted to mention a song for today we were talking about songs but uh, i remember this song called eye of the storm by ryan stevenson it's really a good song kind of goes along with today and i've gone back to it a few times because it's 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 a good song but the chorus goes in the eye of the storm you remain in control and in the middle of the war you guard my soul you mm -hmm. alone are the anchor when my sails are torn your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm mm -hmm. but the rest the, all the verses talk about when when you're down when things are really bad maybe you just lost a child Maybe you, I mean, it's, it's a very meaningful uh, uh, story, but I, I think it kind of goes along with uh, your talk today, Trace. So thought I'd bring it up. It's a really neat song today, so. Yep, Lo love those lyrics. That is so good. All right, gentlemen, that's, a, that's, a, that's another go. Thank you for your uh, 